Hello, everyone. In this video, we will be modeling a sci-fi crate using predetermined areas of rest and detail. Rest areas are places with less details where the viewer's eye can relax and detail areas are where most details or design highlights can be found. In the mesh, I've marked the rest areas as blue and the detail areas as yellow. Besides using reference images, this method can also help us plan our work and avoid wasting time. This is a really good practice especially if you're a beginner. Let's start with the detail areas first, then move on to the rest areas later. I'm going to introduce angular noise detail using random extrude first and use paneling later on as supporting shapes. If you're using the default redo panel like I am, find a vantage point in the viewport where you can see most of the changes that's happening as you edit the properties so you don't get to use the F9 hotkey that much. You can use the static redo panel by toggling it on in the add-on preferences. You can find more about it in the documentation by reading the redo panel slash menu chapter. Here, I am playing with the random seed value to give me the shapes that I want and which I can also manually design later on. Play with the random seat, panel sizes and subdivision to generate different shapes. You can always delete these objects if you don't want them and start over again using the same face selection from the source mesh. Let's move on to the other areas of detail. I'm using them by sections because the amount of faces you use for the random operators have a great effect on the resulting shapes. Using them all at once is your choice, but here I want to isolate the randomization effect in different parts of the detail areas. You can make the face cells or islands bigger by increasing the panel size per loop object. Along with the ratio property, this can let you avoid those small teeth-like details mentioned in the documentation. The documentation also has the controls while editing the redo properties. Like hovering the mouse cursor over a property and using control plus rolling the middle mouse button up or down to increase or decrease its value. This makes it easier to change the seed value for example without manually entering a number or using the arrow icons in both sides of the property bar. Sometimes finding the right shapes can take time but be patient about it and think about how much more time you'd spend modeling these details manually. You can delete the face cells or islands you don't want by going to edit mode, activating face selection with the number 3 hotkey then hover the mouse cursor over the cell and press L to select all linked faces to it. You can then use the hotkey X then F to delete these faces. Now, I'll be going over some of the detail areas again and add random paneling to fill some of the empty spaces.
For the rest areas, these can have no detail at all or have less or minimum details. It all depends on the look you're going after. If you plan ahead as far as what textures and materials you will use for the model, this can also save time because some areas can just use these elements to increase its believability. Here I'm equalizing the number of faces in the selection because the areas with more faces tend to use or generate most of the islands. Now you can see that most of the areas in the face selection are now generating the panel details. Here I'm looking for a minimalistic pattern that will go with the rest of the design. There's an operator in Blender which can let you easily select all faces that lie in the same plane. It's called Linked Flat Faces and you can find it in the Select menu in Edit mode inside the Select Linked submenu. Assign it to Quick Favorites by right-clicking on it then you can quickly access it using the Q hotkey afterwards. You can select faces in multiple planes and use the operator to select all the faces that lie in those planes. This is very useful especially when layering details on random extrude and random panels results. Here you can see that I've stuck to where the planned rest and detail areas are. The rest of the videos will be just about adding supporting details to these initial shapes. Don't let the randomization do all the work. Go to edit mode and use these results to manually model some details.
The quad slice operator is great for quantifying most angular shapes. The linked faces option in the geometry is slated for the next update and is not available in this version yet. You can however mimic the linked faces effect by tagging verts to be used for the quad slice operator and selecting the face island using the L hotkey so the cuts are only limited to these faces. The linked flat faces operator is great because it only selects faces that lie on the same plane and will not affect faces from another angle like the side areas which is perfect especially for random panels results. Here I am going to use clear faces inner in random panels so the resulting mesh will only be the cut detail areas and will remove the rest. This is great as supporting details and you can also save up on the overall resolution of the scene. This will trick the viewer into thinking that these details are actually part of the mesh underneath. These can also be baked into a normal map if you're using the plugin for generating texture maps on a plane. You can layer these details using different subdivisions each time to create a variety of patterns. You can even select them manually after the modeling is done and give them a darker or lighter material color than the mesh underneath to make them stand out.
The linked flat faces operator can also work on curved surfaces. Just increase its sharpness property in the redo panel and it will select these faces without ever selecting the ones from the sides. This is great if you're layering panel details on something like a cylinder object. Now that this model is finished, I'm going to use an appended semi-procedural material from another scene to quickly texture it. You can further heighten the model's believability and design using textures, decals, floater normals, etc. Right now, this design is punching in at 68,000 tries. We're going to use the cleanup operator to optimize this number. This operator can work on multiple objects selected if you are in object mode. I didn't use remove doubles to avoid welding the islands together and clip center since we already toggled this option when using the random operators. You can see that this brought us down to 36,000 tries. If you see any warp geometry after using the operator, try lowering the properties. And that's it for this video, if you have any questions and suggestions, use the comment section or the links in the description of the video and at the last page of the documentation. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.